Big bitch. That's ah! like <laughs> interview with Purple Palace. Big, Big bitch. bitch. No, I love you, and I, I like I freaking so love you so much. <laughs> Hey everyone! Hey Welcome guys. to the channel! I have a celebrity, beautiful woman next to me. I'm so excited! Hello! We, we just filmed a video on her channel. If you don't know her, she is Purple Palace. Hi! Shayna. Um, she has her own channel about literally all things French, all things like lots of different things. Really like art. Fashion, art, yeah. so many different things. A lot of our audience already follows you and like adores you. Love you guys! <laughs> <laughs> the crossover! <laughs> <laughs> and um, like it's been it's really nice because we've been friends for a long time we yeah. have yay and we've wanted to make videos but I feel like we, we as we were just saying we've put our friendship first so we are real friends behind the camera yeah, we're not just like those people that, yeah <laughs> we're just collabing I know <laughs> so I really appreciate that and I appreciate this friendship because it's so nice to like have another American friend in Paris I feel yeah I love Edwina so Edwina for president <laughs> <laughs> Today's video, I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of interview Purple Palace ah! and also to come up with some tips for anyone who is about to move to France or just like tips in terms of living in French culture in general because we've had such different experiences mm -hmm. and to just like talk about that I think is like such a valuable thing and some funny stories surely will come out of these conversations. So. <laughs> get some popcorn! Get, get some popcorn! Your, get your wine! <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, um, just to give you kind of an outline of this video, we'll be talking about French culture tips, language tips, and all that kind of stuff to start. And, and all then, that jazz. <laughs> and then kind of finish the video with talking about you and like what inspires you and <gasps> all that good stuff. So juicy excited. Stuff. All right. As this is a channel for au pairs, you were an au pair. Yeah. So I guess like kind of, can you give everyone a broad timeline of where you are now and how you got started? With my au pair year? Yeah. Like how you came oh, to France. Okay. And then I know that you were back in the States yeah. a little bit mm -hmm. and then you came back here. So I was an au pair in 2012. I had a really, oh, yeah. yeah, I had a really good experience with my family. I guess we can talk about that maybe later, like the details of that, but it was really cool. And um, yeah, I was au pair, oh, no au pair from September until June. And then while I was here, I met my beautiful French husband um, yeah kind of like randomly one day and then when I went back to the US I studied I like took a semester to continue studying and we did like long distance and stuff and then I came back to France and decided to start studying in art school so right now I'm doing my master's so I, I've been here for five years so I've been going to school working on my YouTube channel etc and so that's kind of what my trajectory has been like when I came to France I definitely didn't think that I would meet somebody or that I would stay here long term I thought it was going to be like the most au pairs exactly yeah. but life is crazy and we love it yeah so something that we I want to ask you for sure is like what was your first impressions of Fr France I guess like what were your expectations because you know all the Pinterest boards and like Instagram versus what you actually what was your real first impression right well okay so when I first got to Paris like landed at the airport I was like an American like I didn't like and then my host family came and picked me up at the airport and I just remember like um, them driving through the Parisian streets and I was like this is so beautiful and like you know talking to them in the car and like getting getting the keys to my apartment and being like is this real life and then I remember that night we walked down to the Eiffel Tower and you had like a live out situation yeah I had my own apartment honestly best situation like eight-year-old boy oh like, really just yeah one kid, just one kid I mean he was much cooler than me though he was always like kind of he was sassy uh -huh. but I mean it's fine it prepared me for the future <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I remember like we walked down to the Eiffel Tower and just like it was like a whirlwind basically and then I remember like that was for the summertime your story is reminding me of my story I'll tell in a bit just okay finish your story <laughs> I remember like this was summertime and like all the au pair picnics and like just like it's like so love at first sight summer basically. is so different from the rest I know. of the year as well a couple months in I just started feeling really lonely I just wasn't happy at first and like I definitely didn't think that I was gonna stay like I 
I don't know. Like I just once I was from Florida too, so I wasn't like used to winters. I wasn't used to snow, and I remember that year it snowed so bad. Mm -hmm. And then you know, like my grandma passed away. Like just different things happened where I was like, uh, I can't wait for this to be over. And then your grandmother passed away. Your au pair year. I know. I'm I know. So sorry. I know. And That's I was hard. Yeah, but it happened so quickly. I was like, should I come home? And my mom's like, no. Like you know, you're this is a once in a lifetime thing. Like don't. You know, so that was really hard, and yeah. then I remember, um... That's really nice. But I remember, like, the last semester, I was like, you know what, I'm only here for a year, like, let me really make an effort. And that's when, like, I actually started really enjoying being here, and, like, making friends that I actually enjoyed. Because, like, I think at first you make friends that just because Definitely. you're like, I just need some people. Like, Definitely. I just need... Definitely. And, like, oh my gosh, we didn't, like, so click at first. And then that's kind of around the time that I met Alex, and, like, then I, at the end I was like, the oh! Her husband yeah, Alex, yeah, so... That's kind of like how I felt and like the ups and downs. Life in Paris is, is really lonely sometimes, especially when you're just moving here, you're young, you've like, this is my first city where I like had to make friends all from ground zero. Yeah. And so like, it's important to realize like you might meet people that you don't click with right away and then you can start over and make different friends. Yeah. Later. I feel like we're definitely the type of people too is like, I think we're kind of outgoing where we can make friends easily, but yeah. then it's like, do I actually want these people. We don't want to be yeah, friends with these people. Which is totally real. Like, you have to, like, sit and reflect. And I always, like, live by the motto of you are a reflection of the five people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, oh, God. And I'm very careful. And, like, you're very careful, too, yeah. with, like, who you let in and who you don't and, like, who mm -hmm. your close friends. So uh, yeah. that's, like, really good advice, I think. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of your au pair life, yes. we always talk, too, about, like, how there's different types of au pairs. There's different types of situations. And what were your big challenges? Well, first of all, on that, I just wanted to say really quick, like, don't go with the first family that offers yes. something. Like I literally almost yes. went to Nice and like lived in with like three, really with like three kids. Cause you fall in love with that first family so fast. I I just was kind of like it was kind of last minute decision for me to come. So I was like kind of desperate. But like coming from a place of desperation, you're only gonna attract negative things. But if you come from a place mm -hmm. of like abundance, we got our law of attraction coming. <laughs> <laughs> like that's when things can really like like you are the one that's gonna be able to decide what you're end result and setup is gonna be. Like, don't sell yourself short. Like, you are amazing, and like, you have so many things to offer, like, this future family. So make sure that, you, like, you get a good salary. Make sure you get, like, if you want your own apartment, don't settle for less, mm -hmm. even if it takes a little longer. There are so many families out there looking for an au pair mm -hmm. that you will find it, you know? Like, don't don't just settle. So anyway, I just wanted to say that, yeah. and then... And I will say, too, yeah. it's not all about the apartment. Like, I wish that I for had... For me, it was. <laughs> okay, for some people it is, and that's fine. But I also wish that I had, like, thought a little bit harder about my family dynamic and relationship because oh. my first host family did not give a shit about me and I had my own apartment but how could you tell that before, how could you it tell that worse. like they didn't give a shit about you before you came they like, were the like I should have known because like I barely was able to get the kids to look at the camera to interview with on Skype the host dad I never saw I didn't interview with him and then when I was there that was a reflection of what it was like to like be living with them um and it was just like it's something that you can't tell, which is why I would encourage you to, with like one or two video chats, but I would encourage you to like video chat with them as much as possible and, talk to and don't be pairs. afraid to ask hard questions and talk to the au pair that they had before. I would have known because they couldn't keep a person for longer than three months at a time. Yeah, you've had some really bad experiences. <laughs> the things I've heard Adwina tell me, I'm like, oh my god, like, girl, you're strong. I've lived through it all. That's why we have this. <laughs> What are your, in terms of like broader French culture, yeah. what are your least favorite things about French culture? Okay, so one thing that my, my host mom actually told me because she works in like a corporate office and um, she told me that when you're presenting like a new project, the French will tell you all the reasons why something isn't going to work yeah. before they might say yes. Like they might yeah. still say yes, but they're gonna tell you all the Challenge you. It's gonna be like a n hard no until like, you finally get them to come around because I feel like in American culture because that's all I can really compare it to is I feel like we're a lot more open to innovation in like the sense of like if you have like a weird idea like that's like celebrated yeah and we really like people who think outside the box whereas here in France like um conformism is really important because that's kind of like what it's their country is really I don't want to say based on but it's real really important important element of French culture is like everybody kind of staying in line mm -hmm. and 
Um, that's very a, structured. Yeah. And there's a way of doing things. Exactly. Like yeah, like they have traditions basically. Like okay, like we're we're going to eat in this certain order, and like we do things this certain way, and like coming from. A culture where it's a little bit more like go with the flow, happy. Like, oh, you want to yeah. eat dinner at like eleven o'clock? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like you can do <laughs> whatever <laughs> you want. And so, like, that is something that can be a little bit um, frustrating. But at the same time, I feel like being a foreigner in that situation has been a superpower because where other people are kind of afraid to think outside the box, that's been like my strong suit. Mm -hmm. And people are like, yeah, are, you are like, out. wow, you stand out so easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so first, then I get now positive. What are your favorite things about French culture? I have so many. Well, first of all, I... I more than the night. You have more favorites than I know. Favorites, yeah. yeah, I feel like one thing that I really love is how the French really value relationships. So I always say that if you're friends with a French per French person, you're a friend for life. It's not like a fair weather friend. Like if you really need something, you can call them. Like, you know, I had a French friend and I would like, like randomly she was just like, do you, if you ever need money, you can just ask me or like just things like that. Or as I feel like in the US, we're a lot more, like we're friends, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not as like dedicated sometimes or like you can actually be nice to a lot of people, but that doesn't mean you're like really friends. Yeah, there's the metaphor of like, French <laughs> people are coconuts, like hard on the outside, soft on the inside. American people are like peaches, soft on the outside, easy to like get to know, but then you realize if you strike a nerve, like it's over. It's over, bitch. <laughs> Can I swear? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so that's one thing. Another thing that I really love is the appreciation for art and culture because like I was, I was talking to Edwina earlier and it's like if you do a creative job in France, like I feel like if you do a creative job in the US, whether you're like a writer or an artist, you might be kind of looked down upon in a way of like, okay, but how do you actually make money? Whereas here, like they think that's really cool and they respect you and there's like help for people who really want to get started and yeah. doing that for like grants and things like that. Um, so I really, really appreciate that. And the last thing that really comes to mind is um, the pace of life. Like mm -hmm. I love how we're focused on pleasure here and um, like, your actual personal life becomes before work like 35 hour work week yes like that's crazy you know yeah work-life balance there's a lot of emphasis on that depending yeah. on what sector of life you work in but there's definitely an emphasis on like okay work's over like what do you actually do with your yeah life? there's not that hustle culture like even us like sitting in the park right now it's just so nice and relaxing and yeah i don't feel like i'm in competition with everybody like in the u.s i feel like you're always in competition like who's you know, after high school, who's done the most? And like, I just don't feel like I am, you know? Mm -hmm. To go off your least favorites about French culture, um, just to kind of like spin things into a positive, I'm also just curious, because you said that it's, this society's really rigid and it's hard to be different, but you're so different. Yeah. Like, you're such an artist, you're so eccentric and fun. How Thanks, Edwina. Go on. Okay. <laughs> so how have you, I don't know, how has that affected you? Is it hard to fit in? Do you just like, do you feel like people judge you harder because you're so different? I feel like people do, and I. but I also feel like there's like a bit of envy in that because I think people want to be that free, mm -hmm. you know? And like, but that's something that like even in the US I experienced like ever mm -hmm. since I was younger, like I've always just been really free and like I feel like if there's any negative negativity from other people, it's not personal, it's just that they want to have that, they want to be free too, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like it's the same here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just, whenever that happens, I see that for what it is and it doesn't really affect me because I'm, I'm just like, I know, I recognize that emotion because I've seen it before. Yeah. You know, and so I'm just like, I feel bad for them. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I have to talk to you about because like, yes, you're too. so good at French, obviously. Oh, thank you. And so, est-ce qu'on devrait parler en français? Oui, si tu veux. Ouais, ok. Bon, moi aussi je parle français, mais ton niveau c'est ultra level. Ultra level! <laughs> Oui, mais attends, moi, moi je, ben, je suis en France depuis beaucoup plus longtemps aussi. Enfin, ça fait combien d'années que tu es en France 6 ans avec des allers-retours. Oui. Mais moi, je suis mariée avec un Français, donc. Euh... C'est différent, mais quand même. <rire> Qu'est-ce que tu as fait pour, euh, pour ton Français Comment tu as appris le Français Est-ce que tu as ouais. des, des astuces pour. Euh... Comment j'ai appris le Français En fait, quand je suis première venue en France, je ne pouvais pas parler du tout. Et je me rappelle même une fois, j'ai fait. Euh... J'ai sorti avec un mec, il m'avait dit le mot toi, which just means you, et j'aime rigoler à mort, je sais pas pourquoi, c'était tellement drôle, j'étais comme, ah, il parle une autre langue, genre, tellement, euh, un truc de base, je mais pouvais quoi? même, non, mais la plupart de, de Fiopère, quand il vient en France, il peut parler un petit peu, enfin, mais moi, je pouvais vraiment rien dire, 
Moi, rien moi aussi. Tout. Toi aussi Je ne sais pas le français, non. C'est des grâces à mes, mes, ma famille d'accueil que j'avais pris un français en fait. Parce qu'ils ne pouvaient pas parler l'anglais Ouais, il n'y avait pas d'option anglaise, non. Et du coup, en fait, quand tu es fille au père, il faut que tu prennes le cours de langue. C'est un parti de ta visa. Ça fait partie de ta visa. C'était. Ah, maintenant, c'est plus comme ça, ouais. Ah, c'est vrai Mais ah, on, on le suggère. Du coup, j'ai jamais pensé que je vais parler français. Enfin, C'était même pas un objectif pour moi. Je pensais, ok, bah, je vais venir en France, je vais voyager, je vais vivre la vie en rose, tu vois. Mais je pensais pas. Pour moi, je vois pas vraiment l'intérêt à apprendre une langue si tu veux pas l'utiliser. Et je pensais pas que je vais utiliser euh, le français. Donc. Ah bon Non, non, mais je pensais. Bah, après mon année d'être au père, je pensais pas que j'allais rester. Ça est rentré aux États-Unis. Ouais, je me suis dit, bah, après, je vais tout perdre. Enfin, je vais tout perdre. Du coup, euh, en fait, j'ai allé à mon cours de français, qui était obligatoire à l'époque. Et euh, en fait, tous les, tous les autres de mon cours, ils parlaient anglais entre eux. Enfin, tu vas les autres élèves. Parce qu'ils étaient d'autres. Ils... Oui, voilà, ils étaient en Russie, mais... ou ils étaient à l'Allemagne, et donc, du coup, on parlait tous en anglais. Donc, je me suis dit, mais c'est tellement nul parce que je viens à ces cours, ça dure 2-3 heures, et euh, je prends pas. Donc, euh, j'ai arrêté le cours. Et, euh, dit, Après combien de mois 2-3 mois. Parce que ça me faisait tellement chier. Genre, Moi je, aussi. Me suis, je me suis réveillée d'un matin, je me suis dit, ok, il faut que je vais euh, à ce cours, cours qui n'est même pas. Ça m'aide pas du tout. J'ai envie de pouvoir. Euh, aller voir, voir les autres choses, genre même d'avoir un pique-nique avec des amis, tu vois, parce que surtout je me suis dit, bah, j'ai pas beaucoup de temps en France, donc j'ai envie de profiter. Du coup, après, euh, en fait, l'ancien fille au père, elle est revenue, euh, en fait, elle a regretté, en fait, d'avoir parti. D'avoir quitté la France Mais oui, mais en fait, euh, sa, sa place est déjà prise, parce que j'étais là. Donc elle m'avait dit, ta place est prise, <rire> d'accord Oui, oui, non mais je pense qu'elle a regretté aussi parce qu'après elle n'a trouvé... enfin, pas pu, pu trouver quelque chose d'aussi bien. Et euh, en fait elle m'avait dit qu'elle, elle avait appris le français euh, grâce à les échanges de conversation. Du coup, j'ai rejoint une page Facebook mm -hmm. où j'ai trouvé euh, une dame, une dame qui voulait apprendre l'anglais et on s'est rencontrés et pour 30 minutes elle, elle parlait euh, en anglais et moi en français l'autre 30 minutes mm -hmm. et j'ai même rencontré euh, euh, une fille que je suis devenue super amie avec elle était euh, le mademoiselle de honneur le demoiselle de honneur à mon mariage ouais. le, le témoin. et c'est comme ah. ça c'est comme ça que je l'ai rencontré c'était comme ça euh, avec les échanges conversations et euh, je commençais vraiment à regarder des films enfin toutes les choses que tu fais euh, que tu devais faire quoi in the beginning what were your goals all i wanted to do is be able to have a conversation i didn't care if i made errors like i feel like a lot of people get hung up on like like um masculine feminine yeah things like that and like even now people are like your accent's like amazing but yeah. you do sometimes make like a weird error that like we wouldn't expect somebody at your level to make and it's because yeah. i don't give a fuck like i care but like i'm not gonna like i remember i had a really good friend and she was trying to learn english and to me her english was really good because she used like like american slang and stuff even though she did make errors and stuff yeah to me her friends like her english sounded so good because i'm like she sounds really comfortable and i think that is what makes you the confidence yeah you're one of those people where you're like well yeah i make mistakes but my accent is near perfect yeah and like i ha i know all these expressions so like if i make If I say of instead of like on, yeah, and then make the preposition incorrectly, it doesn't matter. And you get you have such a higher level because you're not afraid to make the smaller mistakes, if that makes yeah. sense. And that's really good advice. Have you ever cursed someone out in French? How? Oh, I think like a lot of times what happens to me is when I have confrontational moments, I tend to black out. Like I don't black out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I tend to block them out because I don't want to remember myself as like Angry. a mean person. I do person. the same thing. But yeah, I have like. You know, if somebody like makes me mad, or like I haven't like I have been like I've defended myself. You know, I actually have a video like how how to defend yourself in French because there's just been so many. I think that's the video where you're like, Ooh. um, I'm wearing the same exact shirt. <laughs> just look for the thumbnail with the shirt. If you ever need help with like learning French expressions and stuff, this girl's channel is the bomb. Uh, I actually, have you ever had a moment where you like just rent like English took over and you just like had to just. You just, the emotions were so deep that you're just like speaking in English. I feel like a lot of it, not only like people I don't know, but like, you know, in a relationship, if you have fights and things like that, it's like annoying to speak in French because your like emotional side is so English. So definitely like in the beginning of like being in a relationship with Alex, I would get like annoyed because, you know, when you are like yelling at somebody, you don't want to have to like think about 
like speaking French well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you just want to be like, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, those moments definitely like English has taken over and then you know, sometimes when I'm drunk or, you know, <laughs> or if I'm really tired, like, I feel like if I'm tired, my French is just like, woo. Like, I don't let people speak to me in English, even though if it's seeming like I'm tired, because I feel like when I'm tired and I force myself to learn French, that's when I learn the most because I'm really exercising that muscle. It's a muscle at the end of the yeah. day. And I've had immersion experiences where like the first day you go into immersion, your brain is so tired. I've had migraines before because I don't let myself listen to anything, read anything outside of French. Yeah. But I feel like I'm growing the most. But I think your French, let's say like her French is, re her French is really good for somebody that isn't like in a couple with somebody where you're speaking only French all the time, like I feel like your French is really, really good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And it's Give a kiss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like that is the best compliment anyone's ever given me. I feel like it definitely like there's a moment where like plateaus and then it just like goes up and then you plateaus and you're just like you feel frustrated. It's so annoying. But you know, eventually it'll there'll just come a day when you're like, oh my god, I'm fluent. <laughs> What happened? Yeah, there's, what inspires you as an artist, and like, where do you hope to see yourself in terms of like Purple Palace and your art in yeah. the, in the next in the future? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Edwina. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like that. <laughs> well, Edwina. <laughs> well, I was just talking to Edwina earlier and like saying how I think it's really important to be specific about what you want. And I remember like before, I would always say like, oh, like would be vague about what I wanted because I thought that if I was too specific, I would if ever I failed, then it would, I would have really failed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now I try to be really specific. So I, in like five years time or whatever time, I want to have like my own art studio with a beautiful garden. I want to have a little tabby cat sitting out front. <laughs> <laughs> a cute little Orange neighbor. One? No, like, um, like a grayish brown. This is how I imagine him. He's grayish brown. Him. Okay. Yeah. I like, I like. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just want to have like, I want to be comfortable. I don't need to be like super rich or anything like that, but I want to be comfortable and be a full-time creative. So that mm. means to me, like I would love to continue YouTube, but I don't want to feel like I have to do it mm -hmm. if I don't want to. Like I want to be making my sculpture, my paintings and doing that full-time and making films. So yeah, that is what I want for my future. And obviously I want to have beautiful friends like Edwina in it. You know, I wanna, obviously Alex. I forget, I forget <laughs> Alex to put him too. in there. He's there, he's there mowing the lawn. He'll be there. Are you in the States? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I imagine myself in like either, okay, so there's this. I feel like the beach, France is something I heard. Yeah, I love the beach, but also like there are some parts of Paris that are kind of like, like they're a little more hidden, but they do have like actual neighborhoods with like beautiful gardens. A little pricey, but they exist and they're really cute with like cobblestone mm -hmm. and yeah, we're not counting anything. Anything is possible. Anything is possible, but in 2025, be specific. when yeah. this 2020 is over, hopefully the world's a lot brighter. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and what inspires me? I really just like am inspired by pop culture in a lot of ways. Like I think that like good art resonates with the culture that it comes up with, mm -hmm. comes up in. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things from like my youth, like you know, cartoons or like, you know, TV shows, film, theater. I really like, I did a lot of theater, so I'm definitely really interested in like props, set design, things like that. So it depends on like the certain project, but you'll see like what I make is really colorful and full of texture because I just love playing and have having fun, kind of like I do in life. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, anyway, thank you for being in this video. I, it was an honor, seriously. If you have any more questions, check out Purple Palace and comment down below. Um, and check out Edwina on my channel. Yeah, we just posted a video for that oh, yeah, about, about dating, dating yeah. Frenchmen. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, Ciao. guys. Bye. Do you want to cover the camera? Oh, <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs>